Hello, hello, all of my Be In Demand listeners. Today, we are going to be talking about why you need to be ignoring what mainstream has been telling you. They mean well, but it's actually hurting you and holding your business back. So let's get on to the show. You're listening to Be In Demand, the podcast for honest advice, inspiring stories, and ideas for growing your business by leveraging the expert that you are. I'm your host, Lori Mirabito, business mentor, and I'm also a reformed, painfully shy girl, red wine lover, and exercise enthusiast. Join me as I share how being positioned as the expert in your industry, even if it's a busy one, will help you stand out and be the one in demand to hire and work with. Oh, I'm so glad that we are going to be talking about this topic because I just find that when you're listening to what mainstream tells you, you are just following the masses, literally following the crowd. If you've read the book, Blue Blue Ocean Strategy, it was a book that I picked up and I know that a lot of people talk about this every once in a while about the blue ocean versus the red ocean. And if you haven't read the book, I'm just going to summarize it right here, right now for you. That when you're, when you are doing or acting or thinking the way that everybody else is thinking and acting, that's a red ocean, meaning like sharks attacking, you know, their prey. So that's the red ocean. And that seems to be where everybody ends up going towards And I know that when you are new to the online world, we look at the people that like, oh, it's working well for them. So let me do what they're doing. Let me follow what they're saying to do. And you got to remember, you're not the only person who's listening and watching them. So that's why it becomes a red ocean. I want you to stand out. So let's talk a little bit more about what I bet you're feeling, some of the problems that you are experiencing. You don't have enough clients. I know that when I came into the online world and tried to figure all of this out, I didn't have enough clients. I didn't have enough clients for a while until I finally, like light bulb moment, (laughs) uh, started to remember back to when I first left corporate, what I did. So I get it. You don't have enough clients. You're working hard and you're putting, almost like you're putting in your time. Um, I hear that from a lot of clients, a lot of people, like I have to work this hard. I have to put in my quote, quote, uh, air quotes, that is, I have to put in my time before it's actually supposed to work. You know, you're doing what the influencers say to do. You're writing all of that content. You're getting seen, you know, over coffee chats, you know, like these get to know you type sessions, you know, and then it's like, do it again next week and do it again next week. And you're building relationships and you're spending time on social media because you're supposed to be engaging because there's this thing called the algorithm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that algorithm. And the algorithm is like the nasty landlord who keeps changing the rules on you. Just when you've paid the rent and you think I'm all set for this month, meaning you know exactly how the algorithm is working, the algorithm changes. TikTok changes their rules, their algorithms, uh, Instagram changes, Facebook changes. I mean, like it all just keeps changing. I have to say that one of the social medias that I platforms that I do like is LinkedIn for their attitude. And if you haven't listened to the special episode that I had on LinkedIn with special guest Donna Sudella, I highly recommend that you go and listen to that. It was actually in the beginning of this year. But LinkedIn realizes that it's a professional um, platform and that people actually have jobs. So it doesn't expect you to be on the platform 24 seven. So can you relate to any of those problems? Not enough clients, you know, because you don't have enough clients, you start worrying about the lack of income. You know, like you're basically working for free. Maybe you're gonna have to go get a job. Maybe that means that you're gonna have to get some extra childcare. You're not going to be able to enjoy this mommy time with your, with your young children. You're, maybe you're, you feel like you're working harder than ever 
And you feel like this is why I went into business for myself was to have more freedom, more flexibility. Sure, I might be able to work from anywhere, but maybe you feel like you're working so much and all the time. Maybe instead of having that full-time corporate job, you are now working 60 hours, seven days a week. I totally get that because I was there also. Mindset work. You're doing the mindset work. You're ho- and you're hoping that one day this is all going to finally work out, but you're hoping that it's actually going to be sooner than later. So you spend time journaling, spend time meditating, spend time visualizing, you know, all of that, all of that advice that we're hearing from, from all the different influencers that are out there. You're doing tons of free coffee chats, you know, that get to know you, hoping that they're actually going to send you a referral your one, one day, your way. And really what you need to be doing is getting your message out there in front of the people who can actually hire you. And maybe you're also DIYing like the latest social media trends, you know, and also maybe some other, we're going to talk about algorithm also, the different algorithm tips, hoping that the right people are going to see your posts and book a call with you. When the fact is that non-ideal clients are actually seeing your content that they're seeing your stuff. And so because the problem doesn't relate to them, they're just kind of passing by or there's other people that are out there and they're just giving you like a little heart. Here's a like, here's a like, not really giving you much thought in the comments because if you had you know, more thought provoking comments to start having those conversations, you know, then the algorithm would actually say, hey, people like her content, let's Let's show more people her content. Again, you're at the mercy of an algorithm. And I want to talk to you today about that's not the way to grow your business. I actually want you to go into the blue ocean, get away from the red ocean and into the blue ocean. So before we dive into getting into the blue ocean, I just want to also share also what I think is happening because I see this a lot in a lot of the clients that I work with. You're hiding behind your words, your social media content, because it feels safer than being seen, than having, maybe you don't even like to take selfies and have pictures of yourself out there on social media. So you've got these these images that you're either downloading from Canva or some other sort of image, imaging, uh, supply picture, beautiful pictures, but they're, they're not a view. Like it just, you would rather hide behind other people's pictures and your words, your social media content, you're playing it safe instead of really sharing the message that you're here to talk about. And what I mean by that is you're being beige, Yeah, beige. And I know that that's a little harsh to say, but when you're beige, you blend in with everybody. And actually when you're beige, you're actually in the red ocean. So you're getting swallowed up, so to speak, you know, by everybody that's out there. And it's really hard to stand out when you're trying to be the coach, the service professional for everybody. I want you to really to like find your niche speak up and talk about what you believe is wrong with the industry, what, how you believe that people should be thinking about that your particular topic, your particular expertise. And the last one that I, that I want to share here is you want to be liked. You want to be liked and not judged for what you do, for who you help. So you're playing it safe. You're playing it safe so that nobody is judging you. You're playing it safe so that nobody says, hey, who are you to be talking about this particular topic? And again, when I was when I walked into the leadership industry in speaking, I felt exactly like that. Who was I to be talking about leadership? I was no big CEO ever, but I came from an experience of something that I really saw in healthcare about what made the difference between one department to another department because I had transferred from one place, from one specialty to another specialty and just saw the difference, not only in myself, but in the team 
that I was working with in both departments. So that's what gave me the right to be speaking because I knew coming from my perspective as an employee that this is how we could be changing leadership. This is how we could be changing healthcare. So I'm going to get off that little soapbox right now because I have a lot to say when it comes to leadership. But there was a time when I first started out that I felt like, who am I to be talking about this? You know, I didn't want people to judge me based on my experience. I've even written a couple of books and I'll tell you that that imposter syndrome does show up. And even now, as I've been in this industry and I've been an entrepreneur for a long time now, it still shows up, but less often. And when it does show up, I recognize it right away. So I know I've already done a couple of episodes on the imposter syndrome. So I highly recommend that if you feel like that imposter syndrome is showing up and hanging around and kind of dictating the show, I want to suggest that you go and make sure that you listen to those. But today, let's talk about how marketing is different today than it was just a year ago, two years ago, five, 10 years ago. Our buyers are smarter. Well, they're not really smarter. They're just wiser, I would say. Um, they're more astute. They, you know, like they're, because they're seeing all of these trends in this marketing online world, like they're seeing it again and again and again. And again, if you're doing that, the same thing that everybody else is doing, and you're blending in your beige, you're in the red ocean, and your buyer, your ideal clients are standing behind you and like arms crossed and like, hmm, yep, this looks familiar. I've seen this with other people. And then there's also that we want to be genuine with our audience. You know, and today I just feel like after the past couple of unique years, as I like to refer, refer to it, that the online space is busier and noisier than ever. So many people have left the corporate, their jobs, and decided to like, I'm not going to be at the mercy of somebody else dictating whether I have a job or how I work. I'm going to work the way that I want to work. I'm going to work the, the hours that I want. I'm tired of commuting, you know, an hour and a half into a city to a job that doesn't fulfill me. So there's so much opportunity to actually be working for yourself. And I highly encourage you to explore that if it's not something that you have been doing. But I would imagine that if you're listening to my podcast, that you probably are some sort of an entrepreneur looking for ways to stand out. And this is one of those episodes that is a behind the scenes. This is going to be like, I'm going to, I'm going to call this like a foundational episode because understanding how to stand out in a noisy world is critical for all of us. And also just to be on our toes, realizing putting ourselves in our audience's shoes, being really aware of that. Because as trends come and go, really always coming back to what is my audience experiencing? How can I make this better for them? So let's go back to what I started off by saying in the beginning of this episode about stop doing what mainstream is doing. I will actually want you to do the opposite. That's right. The opposite, you know, and you know that I'm all about speaking because I believe that speaking is the fastest way to grow your business. And there are many different forms of speaking. So let's just talk about that a little bit, you know, about following the masses and going in the opposite direction. You know, there was many times that I attended conferences and whether it was 500 people, a thousand people, 3000 people. You know, when it came time for lunch, which I noticed was always after that 12 o'clock hour, because a lot of these bigger conferences are going to be held in, you know, some sort of a city that has a conference center. And typically you're going to have a, like a lot of lunch and restaurant places nearby. And so to avoid the other offices and companies that are in the area, we'll wait till their lunch hour is over. So that was one thing that I noticed is that lunch during these conferences was typically after the 1, 1.30 timeframe. But the host would get up there 
or who, or somebody who was emceeing and really would direct people like, Hey, for the next 90 minutes, we're just going to break for lunch. And they would tell people where they could go for lunch, where there was like a strip of restaurants. So guess what happens? You've got a mass amount of people, like literally like a herd of people that are going in that direction. And I would go in the opposite direction. And I think almost every single time that I ever went in the opposite direction, every time except once, I found a place to eat. It was quiet. I got my food quickly. I didn't have to feel rushed. The person who was waiting on me didn't have to feel rushed. And I got back to the conference in time. And that's the exact same thing that I want you to start thinking about what you're doing. Look at what you're doing. Are you following the crowd and going in the same direction that everybody else is going in? Or are you deciding, maybe you're deciding today, to go in an opposite direction, a direction that actually is going to bring you someplace where people will then start to notice you more. So of course, what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about speaking. You know, there's that crazy stat that's out there about 95% of the people are actually afraid of public speaking. I actually think now with um, cell phones and people taking selfies and doing lives that we're going to see that number is really going to change, which is also part of the reason why I'm in this particular niche, because just because you're not afraid of the camera doesn't mean you know how to communicate, you know, eloquently, you know, to your ideal clients. But let's stand out. And when you are that person who is speaking, whether you are speaking in person or whether you are speaking virtually, it is the most efficient way to be marketing yourself, the most efficient way to get in front of the right people, which is what I'm all about. I'm all about efficiency. Efficiency is definitely one of my middle names, along with repurposing. But when you are that speaker who's being introduced, whether you are speaking on as a guest on someone's podcast, whether you have your own podcast, um, a meeting, a conference, you're a guest expert in somebody's high-end mastermind, you know, you are positioned as that person of authority, a person of expertise in that particular industry. And there is so much that comes with, with um, being that person that's in the front of the room that your audience goes through. And what I mean is, your audience members, whether it's in person or virtually, or even the people that are involved in that mastermind, they bought a ticket. They're spending time there. They looked you up to see if, should I be there in person or should I just watch the replay? You know, and that's for virtual events like masterminds or virtual conferences. But the in-person one, like, wow, like, should I take the time out of the office, out of seeing, you know, block off time with my clients to go and hear this speaker? And so you start to think about all of those different decisions that your audience, your in-person and virtual audience members are making. And so that means everybody who actually is there, and, you know, granted, if you're speaking virtually, there are going to be some people who had a conflict, had an emergency, didn't feel well, they're going to watch the replay anyways. But just the fact that they're watching the replay, they're still spending time with you. So all of this all together means that everybody who is watching you, they are a pre-qualified lead because they have, they're spending time. They bought a ticket. You know, there's something, there's always an exchange, exchange of money, exchange of time you know, in order to hear you, in order to listen to you speak. So that means that everybody that's in that audience is interested in what you have to say. That makes them pre-qualified leads. And if they're not exactly an ideal client, because that's what speaking is designed, speaking is designed to pull in the right people, the ideal clients to you, and push away the people that are not ideal clients. And you're probably wondering how you do that. And that is something that I teach clients how to do when you craft a signature speech. More on that in a little bit. But that, that is what speaking does. Pulls in the right people, pushes away the other people. And the other people who you're sort of pushing away, they become great referral agents. Whether it's 
to other people who have the same problem that you solve. So who could become ideal clients or even other places to speak because those are a lot, there are lots of people who are on volunteer committees and those people, if they've seen you speak because you were positioned as an expert can be those people who send you an email that says, Hey, I'm on a committee and I heard you speak at this particular event. I'd like to invite you to speak at our event. You know, and when you're the speaker, you don't have to worry about the algorithm. And I think that is like, like the pretty bow on top of this beautiful gift called speaking. You don't have to worry about if the algorithm is liking you today or not liking you today. If your content is getting censored or if it's not getting censored. If you're in a Facebook group and you post something that, hey, they don't want, they, that, that goes against their rules you know, they get to delete it. So you're not at the mercy of anybody like that. And like, let's just talk about hashtags for a minute, you know, making sure that you have the right hashtags. That's a lot of work. And that again, is kind of like the algorithm and it's constantly changing as well. You know, you've probably heard me say that there are, there's over 7,500 speaking opportunities every single day. And think about if you just pitched yourselves a couple of times a week to finding the perfect places to speak and get yourself booked. You could be speaking in front of pre-qualified leads. As a matter of fact, I was talking recently to a woman. It was for an ideal client interview. And I just love doing ideal client interviews. One, because these are people who are in my audience. These are people who are they may know me, they may not know me, but they're interested in some form of speaking or they've done a little bit of speaking. But either way, it's my way of really just kind of like diving in and having these really juicy conversations with people who might be my ideal client. But it's not because I'm trying to sign them on as clients. I'm really just trying to like get these, get some answers as to like, are you speaking? What holds you back from speaking? Why are you speaking? Tell me about your the successes you have had in speaking. And I'm going to do an entire episode on ideal client interviews so that you can be doing the same. And I'll be sharing some of the results that I recently found from this particular round of ideal client interviews. And I highly, highly recommend that you do these ideal client interviews like once a year. You don't have to do as many as I just did this past time because I just kind of like really love getting to know my audience. And if somebody raises their hand and says, says I'll, I'll be one of your interviewees, um, I always say yes. So um, just kind of take out that so um, please. So let me just share a story from one of my ideal client interviews. I just happened to ask her, you know, have you done any speaking? Yes, she had. Have you had any success speaking? Yes, she had. Well, how many clients have you signed on? She goes, well, you know, like one, one when I'm speaking. Fantastic. And then I asked her, well, how much is that client worth? Like, how much do you charge for your service, your program? And she said, a thousand dollars. I said, okay, how long did you speak for? And she told me she spoke for an hour. So what I said to her was, so in one hour, you signed on a client. So that means that one hour you made a thousand dollars. And she was like, oh my, I never even thought about it that way. So suddenly earning $900, sorry, a thousand dollars. Sorry, just edit that out. Suddenly earning a thousand dollars in an hour because she gained one client. She literally saw speaking from a different point of view. It was like, I should be doing more speaking, especially since it's worth about $1,000 an hour. So think about it as you could either be speaking in front of a big or a small audience filled with your ideal clients and sign on one or two clients, or you could spend that time writing social media posts that may or may not bring you any clients, that may or may not bring you any traction, that may or may not position you as the expert because people are just scrolling on social media. So 
I just want you to think about if you were using speaking, even if you only signed on one client every time you spoke, but you spoke twice a month, whether it was in person or virtually, and you signed on a client each time you spoke. So that's two clients a month when you're speaking twice a month. How quickly would it take you to have a full roster? How long would it take you until you had to start having a wait list, a wait list of people who were willing to wait to work with you until you had a space, whether you opened up more space on your calendar, you had a client who finished up with you, you opened up a group program. How long would that take? And think about like, as clients finish working with you, that you would have this list of hot leads who are ready to work with you. That's what speaking does for you. Whether you are speaking at a meeting or a conference, you know, or speaking as a guest expert in a mastermind and being able to speak and share and communicate with that audience in a way that you are the very next best step afterwards, because you are delivering a message. This is how you make change. This is how you know you help the people that you are helping. This is how you help people understand like what's the problems that they're that they are suffering from. Because sometimes we don't even know. We just think, oh, this is just a natural part of growing a business. When that might be something, a problem that you solve for your audience. Like, why are you posting? Like, if you just happen to be like a virtual assistant, why are you posting to social media? Why not hire a virtual assistant? You know, as a virtual assistant, like if you were speaking to an audience of entrepreneurs, of business owners, to be able to share with them, here's what a virtual assistant is. Here's what virtual assistants do. And then you get to share your philosophy, who you work with and who you don't work with. And when you are being able to get up there and share that sort of information, like let's just say you're a web designer. Here's my approach to designing a beautiful, engaging website that gets you business. Here's what I see the masses out there doing. Here are the mistakes that I see people making when they are putting together their website. They're starting completely wrong. You know, and that's one of the things that I do with my clients is that I help them start with the end in mind. What do you want speaking to do for you? I need to know what that goal is. And then I reverse engineer. I work my way backwards because in order to have that goal, then there are some other questions that I ask my clients or inside my group program, In Demand Signature Speech, I ask them so that then they can start like, oh yeah, I get it. That's how I'm going to educate my audience, teach my audience, but also speak to their objections. Let them know like, here are the problems that I know that you're experiencing. Here's what I know that you're doing, how you're trying to solve your own problems but you're going about it all wrong. Here's what you need to be doing. So anyways, more on that. That's inside In Demand Signature Speech, or you can actually work with me one-on-one. And if you want to learn a little bit more about how I work with clients and how you might be able to become one of my next clients, you can go to chatwithla.com and fill out the application and book some time with me. And otherwise, I hope that you gathered a lot from this particular episode and just realize that stop following the masses. Let's get you to stand out in your industry so that you get the clients, so that you work with the very specific clients that you want to be working with and that you have the profitable, thriving business that you have been dreaming of, the reason why you went into business for yourself. So until next time, I want you to be in demand. Thanks for hanging out with me. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And join me over in my private Facebook group for more tips, community, and free trainings. You'll find the link in the show notes. You can also help this podcast reach more listeners by leaving a review. And as a thank you, each month I pick one of my reviewers to win a free coaching call with me. So if you haven't done so already, please leave a review and you could be the next winner.